If you're buying Robux or redeeming a gift card, simply use star code SUNSET to support this channel. If there's one thing most people know about the dodo bird, it's that they were dumb. If they had been human, they would have been the kind of person who changes pants while driving. Yes, legend has it, this creature was only really ever a danger to itself, a true poster child for the Darwin Awards. At least, that's the story we've been fed. But is it true? Turns out the whole story that the dumb dodo got itself hunted to extinction by being so stupid may have been a big load of doo-doo. Leon Klassen, professor of vertebrae paleontology and evolution at Netherlands Maastricht University, believes the Dutch sailors who first encountered the bird in 1598 didn't actually hunt the birds to extinction, though the sailors likely had an indirect role in the demise of the species. Previously, it was believed the birds were fat and were hunted for food. But in the dense jungles of their native Mauritius, the bird would have been much leaner than previously thought, and therefore not as appetizing of a meal. Further, these jungles would have also made it much harder for the few hundred sailors to catch the birds, regardless of how unafraid the dodos were of human beings. Classens believes the real problem was the rats and other animals that would have landed with the sailors. These animals would have been able to multiply quickly in an unrestricted habitat and would have feasted on dodo eggs and outcompeted them for food, a double extinction. <laughs> World, but Deinonychus is far more influential among paleontologists, and its numerous fossils have shed light on the appearance and behaviour of this raptor dinosaur. The name Deinonychus references the single large curving claw on each of this dinosaur's hind feet, a trait that it shared with its fellow raptors of the middle to late Cretaceous period. Today, paleontologists believe that most theropod dinosaurs, including raptors and tyrannosaurs, sported feathers at some stage in their life cycles. To date, no direct evidence has been adduced for Deinonychus having feathers, but the proven existence of feathers on other raptors like Velociraptor implies that this larger North American raptor must have had feathers as well. Three million years ago during the early Jurassic period, roamed a most peculiar invention of Mother Nature. A creature that was one of the closest living descendants of pure dinosaurs. It was a medium-sized theropod, which are classified as a suborder of dinosaurs. It had all hollow bones, three-toed limbs, and were all essentially carnivorous. Now this episode is about the Dilophosaurus, or as I like to call it, for starters, it didn't actually have frills, nor did it spit a toxic-like tar substance at its victims. Still, it was a cool spin that really invoked the viewer's imagination and forced a notorious identity for the beast in the hearts and minds of many as an advanced and lethal killer. In contrast to its depiction in Jurassic Park, the Dilo was the furthest thing from small, but it wasn't just its size that made this prehistoric beast a lethal killer. It was other attributes such as its body, built for speed, powered by large, dense muscles that pushed the animal to speeds exceeding 40 kilometers an hour. Large claws on the hind legs are suggested to be tools used to grip onto prey and also double as stabilization aids when running. Giant sloths are a lot like their modern-day descendants. They were slow, harmless, and, well, adorable. 
key difference was that they were bigger. And I mean a lot bigger. The largest of these tardy titans would have reached up to 7 meters tall and weighed in at over 6,300 kilograms. Giant sloths evolved in South America about 35 million years ago. And thanks to several specimens we've found in good condition, we have a pretty good idea of how they lived their lives. That is, until 11,000 years ago when they went extinct during the Ice Age. The Glyptodon is an extinct mammal, distantly related to modern armadillos. It lived during the Pliocene and Pleistocene epochs, which took place 5.3 million to just under 12,000 years ago. That's quite a long time to be on planet Earth, and they didn't go extinct that long ago. They disappeared right around the time of the Ice Age. But the changing climate on planet Earth wasn't the only reason why Glyptodons are no longer with us. Glyptodon lived at the same time as early humans, and definitely interacted with them. It is believed that the Glyptodon went extinct because they were hunted by Glyptodon was encased in a hard, thick, protective armor. They were pretty large and could grow to be up to 3 meters or 11 feet long, 4.9 feet high and weighed up to a ton, in cultures having an obsession with them. Glyptodon jewelry, artwork, rituals and songs. Modern environmentalists and animal rights activists would not have allowed the Glyptodon to go extinct. They would have been protected. There would be wildlife reserves where the Glyptodon could roam free, and maybe even safaris that would allow tourists to observe them. Much like today's birds, pterosaurs ruled Earth's Mesozoic skies, adapting to many different habitats while their dinosaur cousins roamed below. But these were no birds. Pterosaurs were flying reptiles, and some were as big as fighter jets. Named for the Aztec winged serpent god, Quetzalcoatlus had a wingspan of nearly 40 feet and likely soared through the skies hunting for baby dinosaurs below. Some, like Aneurygnathus, were the size of small birds and probably preferred to eat insects. Pterosaur fossils also suggest that even the largest species must have been relatively light for their size because, much like birds, their bones were hollow. Hollow bones would have enabled even Quetzalcoatlus to soar. But not all pterosaurs could fly. In 2009, paleontologists found an enormous specimen in Transylvania that they nicknamed Dracula. At 11 and a half feet tall, with a wingspan of 39 feet, it's one of the largest pterosaurs ever found. But the shape of its shoulders and wings suggests it probably couldn't get off the ground. Saber-toothed tigers, also known as Smilodons, roamed North and South America for quite some time, along with woolly mammoths. According to fossil evidence, they lived on Earth since approximately 1.8 million years ago. But around 12,000 years ago, during the Quaternary Extinction, the saber-toothed tiger went extinct, along with many other animals present during the Ice Age. Feet long and weighed 440 pounds. They had short limbs and had the build of a bear. Saber-toothed tigers snacked on large mammals, like elephants, rhinos, and others. Perhaps the coolest thing about saber-toothed tigers are their teeth, but they definitely got the short end of the stick when it came to evolutionary advantages. Sure, their huge canines were up to 8 inches long, but that doesn't mean that they were effective at killing prey. Nope, those aren't Godzilla's dorsal plates. These belong to the Stegosaurus one of the most famous plant-eating dinosaurs yet discovered that roamed the Earth during the late Jurassic, 150 to 155 million years ago. In the nearly 150 years since the ancient beast was discovered, 
It has graced the pages of countless newspapers. In 2007, fossils of a member of the Stegosaurus family of dinosaurs were found in Portugal, showing that the animal was able to advance beyond its origins of what is now North America. The now 80 individual specimens found over the years, along with a nearly 90% complete fossil found in 2003 by Bob Simon, has given scientists plenty of information to base their idea of what the creatures may have looked like. Tyrannosaurus rex, one of the most famous dinosaurs in the world. Originally uncovered in 1874 by Arthur Lakes, we've seen many different iterations of this monster, such as this hugely outdated skeletal restoration by William D. Matthew from 1905, which follows a more kangaroo-like posture, has been able to use the musculature of a North American alligator to inform the reconstructions of the Tyrannosaurus skull and they found that the T-Rex would have had a bite force of approximately 8,000 pounds. That's around 3.6 tons. In comparison, a human can bite at around 200 pounds of pressure. So, there you have it. An estimation of what the T-Rex would have looked like thanks to years of scientific research. Did you know that Australia has tigers? Well, had, sadly, they're all but extinct, although some people maintain a bizarre conspiracy that they're still roaming around in Australia's interior. And when I say tigers, what I really mean is striped marsupials that kind of resemble more of a wolf-like creature than anything else. And when I say Tasmanian, Oh wait, no, that, that, that bit's correct, sorry, I was on a roll there. But you get the picture, right? Believe it or not, for thousands of years, the indigenous people of Australia, New Guinea and Tasmania lived side by side with perhaps one of the most awesome creatures that evolution has managed to spit out. Part kangaroo, part wolf, part tiger, part bizarre amalgamation of all three. The Tasmanian tiger is one of the coolest character creations in history. So let's see what life would be like if they weren't, sadly, driven to extinction. <laughs> There's an animal whose scent would frighten a T-Rex. It's Triceratops. It represents what happens when you evolve something that can stand up to the power of Tyrannosaurus Rex. Triceratops is the most dangerous dinosaur, probably the most dangerous animal ever to have evolved on land. This plant eater is a hulking four-legged creature. 26 feet long, 10 feet high, weighing six tons. Otherwise known as the Pleistocene Epic. Their closest living relatives are the Asian elephant. They were around the same size as African elephants, reaching heights of up to 11 feet and weighing up to 6 metric tons. Woolly mammoths were extremely similar to elephants, but they had adapted to living in the extremely cold climates of the Ice Age. They had small ears and short tails to limit the amount of extremities exposed to the cold. And of course, woolly mammoths were covered in thick fur that could be either dark or light, and they had long curved tusks. Mammoth fossils have been found almost everywhere on Earth except Australia and South America. It is commonly believed that woolly mammoths died out at the end of the last ice age, which was about 10,000 years ago.